Morning, folks. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School, and I was taking a break from hunting this morning. It's the muzzleloader season here in Ohio, and I've got my pack basket over here with my stuff that I carry around when I'm going to go out and muzzleload, and I leave it somewhere out of camp, in this case down here at the classroom, so that I can come back to it during the day to take a break. That way I'm not taking a break and building a fire out in the woods where I'm hunting. I just walk back in, walk back out. It's not that big of a deal. What I thought we'd do today is I'm going to get myself some Pathfinder provisions made here. So I'm going to pour some water into this and close this bag up. We're going to let this steep for a little while and cook in the bag. Shake it up a little bit. Kind of lay it on its side and let it cook. Move our stove out of the way here. What I thought we'd do today is I had some questions I posted on Facebook the other day a little bit about my muzzleloading setup for my normal H&R 12-gauge shotgun. And I had some people that didn't know what that was. And I know that I've made lots and lots of videos in the past on this stuff, especially in the 21st Century Long Hunter series. But I thought there's nothing wrong with kind of reiterating and looking at it again and also looking at kind of any changes that may have happened to what I carry in a shooting bag for the black powder season when I'm using that H&R shotgun as a muzzleloader and some accessories that you can buy from Short Lane Arms to go with that muzzleloading adapter we're going to talk about that give you a little bit more versatility with that H&R 12 gauge and make it easier for you to use it as a muzzleloader. So let's look at that. In case you're wondering, this is the one quart bush pot which is Pathfinder branded, and it's a new product that's not released yet. Won't be coming out until probably second or third quarter of 2023. Same exact style bush pot with locking bail, big bat wing handles, heavy lid, heavy gauge steel, pour spout. Everything's the same except it's one quart. I like that really well because you can actually put this down inside of our pantry bag with the multi-fuel stove, with a canister of fuel, and several tins of food if you wanted to, and then throw some Pathfinder provisions on the side, and you can set yourself up for two, three, four days really, really easy that way. So I like it. Anyway, let's get back to what we we're gonna talk about here, which was muzzle loading. Okay, so how does this muzzle loading the 12 gauge work? Well, it starts with this adapter that goes into the breech and that accepts a 209 shotgun primer. And you put that adapter in. It's got O-rings that hold it in. It's also got a cutout on the bottom so that it doesn't eject when you open the gun. As you can see, when I break this open, it doesn't eject it out. And it is loaded right now. That's why I'm keeping it pointed back and away from me because it's loaded for hunting this morning. And so the way this works is you put this adapter in and then you close the gun. And then you proceed to muzzle load the gun just like you would a normal muzzle loader. Now, a couple inherent issues with that. Let's set this gun aside for a second here. One of those inherent issues with the 12 gauge is you don't have a ramrod, okay? So let's get my shooting bag out here real quick and talk about this. So that breech plug basically is almost like the bottom of a shotgun shell, except it's a solid piece of steel with O-rings on it, a hole passed through it for your spark to go through to ignite your powder. And I use Pyrodex with this system and regular 209 shotgun primers. Now, this is a Duluth shell bag. This is what I carry for a shooting bag. 100% of the time, this is what I carry for my shooting bag. Whether I'm carrying just shotgun shells or whether I'm carrying it for black powder. So the model that we have here is the Tracker. And the Tracker is a rifled 12 gauge. It was made for shooting 12 gauge, three inch, basically uh, slugs out of. And it's rifled barrel so that it, the slug doesn't have to be rifled that you put in it. The rifling takes care of that in the barrel. Now, that makes it also very conducive for muzzle loading because you're going to put round ball in there. And round ball is not rifled. So having that rifled barrel makes it very conducive for that. Now, let me give you one piece of information real quick in this video, not to draw things out too much from the intent. But H&R &R firearms in general, as far as the breech loading break open type guns. They made two different frames for that gun. They made an SB1 frame and an SB2 frame. The SB1 frame is the frame that they used on this tracker model, which is meant to shoot three inch slugs. 
And they also use that frame on all of the handy rifles. And that frame is a heavier duty frame that's made to handle high pressures from large caliber rounds. The SB1 frame is the normal frame that you have on like the top or the partner and those type shotguns that are just single shot break open. Those have the SB2 frame. And those frames will shoot this black powder just fine. However, when you start using adapters, subcaliber type adapters, it can get dangerous when you start using Magnum type loads and heavier charge loads like 44 Magnum, 357 Magnum, things like that. 223, for instance, if you have an SB2 frame. And that's the reason that, generally speaking, if you call short lane arms, he's not going to have adapters available for most of those heavier calibers because he doesn't know that you have an SB1 or an SB2 frame. But an SB1 frame is capable of shooting 357, 44 Magnum, all of those heavier caliber ammunitions because they made handy rifles in those calibers for this gun. Now, there are, if you have a New England or an H&R, and they're pretty much the same gun, the forearm guard is a little bit different, but they're pretty much the same gun. But if you have the same model guns, in other words, you have two H&Rs, two New England firearms, most of them will swap barrels onto the frame. So if you have an SB1 frame and you have a tracker like this one that's got the rifled shorter brush barrel, or brush hunting and things like that. That's why I use it so much. I love it out here in Eastern Woodlands. You could also swap another barrel onto that to give you a 12 gauge smooth bore for small game hunting if that was your choice. So you've got some versatility and there's just so much versatility in a 12 gauge single shot. It's just amazing to me. All right, well, let's talk about muzzle loading this thing. Now, the first thing we talked about was we said that once we have our 209 shotgun primer adapter in the gun, we're going to muzzle load it. So now we got to think about ramrods, right? Okay. Short Lane Arms has a solution for that. They have a folding ramrod that sits right in the bottom of a shooting bag. It's basically just like a tent pole that extends out with a shot cord inside that gives you a full ramrod with a rubber butt on the bottom of it here that you can ram the gun, okay? And it fits all the way down in there with that much sticking out and more than that sticking out once you load the gun. But it folds down small enough that you can easily put this in the bottom of a shooting bag. And that's where I keep mine, is in the bottom of that shooting bag. So you have that option there in your bag to make a breakdown quick ramrod for your gun, okay? A couple other things that are important to have, right? When you're muzzle loading. And again, these are short lane arms products, okay? There are three tools that are on this leather cord that I keep in my shooting bag. One of them is a brass powder measure They're made by short lane arms. It's made to hold the amount of powder or the amount of shot that you would use with this adapter for that gun. So if you're using six shot, you fill it with six shot. If you're using Pyrodex, you fill it with Pyrodex. This one measure works for both the shot and the powder for shotgunning. And then obviously you would use a lead ball, which we'll talk about in a minute, for something like deer season, okay? You also have the replacement for what used to be called like a nipple pick or a vent pick for older muzzleloading rifles. And what this is sized for is the hole in that short lane adapter so that you can clean that out and clean the fouling out of it in between shots and also when you're cleaning it in general, okay? The advantage to that thing is that I like is you can pull it completely out of the gun now the barrel's completely open, so you can swab the barrel, clean the barrel, run a bore brush down the barrel, and then you can take that one single adapter, soak that thing in any kind of solution that you want to to clean it. You've got this to go through there and pick it, and then again, you can pick this in between shots when it's in the gun after you fired it to make sure that that pass-through hole is clear. The third thing that you have on here is you have a Phillips screwdriver. And if you have an H&R shotgun, you know that there's a Phillips head screw that holds the forearm guard on and also holds the buttstock plate on. You can take both of those off with this. So those three tools make it very handy to just have them in your shooting bag and attached and ready to go when you're working with this firearm. The other things that I carry in my shooting bag are real, real simple. I carry some type of a horn of powder. And again, I use Pyrodex. I use, I carry a tin 
that is got sheep's wool inside of it. And inside that tin are 209 shotgun primers below the sheep's wool. So I just pick them out one at a time when I need them. And the sheep wool just keeps them from rattling around. You could carry them in the box if that's what you wanted to do, in the plastic uh, case and the cardboard box. But I prefer to carry them in this. It makes it real simple. It doesn't take up much room in the bag that way. Uh, the next thing that I carry in here is just a small bag of number six shot. And again, if I decide I'm going to shotgun hunt, then I can just use this to fill up that powder measure and shot measure and go to town. So the three main things, right? I've got powder, I've got shot, two and nine shotgun primer. In the front of this pouch, I carry a wad of sheep's wool. And this is what I use basically for my wadding. I use this in between my powder and my shot or in between my powder and my ball. And I also use it over the top of the shot, over the top of the ball. Now I also have some of these plugs in here that are made of like a Celotex material that you can use. And I usually break them in half, put one on one as an overcard for the powder, one as an overcard for the shot. But generally speaking, sheep's wool works best for me. It's cheap, it's easy to get a hold of. It doesn't flame up real bad. So it works really, really well as a muzzleloader wadding. The other thing that you can use, I don't have any of my bag right now that I use when I can find it, is hornet nest. Hornet nest is also something that doesn't flame up real bad and it works real good for wadding. Now, in the same front pocket of this bag, I carry usually about 10 to 12 round ball. Now I've got two different types of round ball in here. They're both exactly the same caliber, which is 720, 720 round ball, okay? Sorry, that took me a minute. This one is brand new ball. This one is what's called chewed ball. And chewed ball, all you do to make that is you take that ball and you lay it on a flat surface and you run a horseshoe rasp over it, roll it around under a horseshoe rasp, and that puts dimples in the ball, which kind of makes it more like a golf ball. It's supposed to be more aerodynamic that way. I use, most of the time I use chewed ball if I've got it in my bag. If I don't, I'll just use regular ball. And so if I've got ball that I've stored at the house or something, I'll make chewed ball out of it beforehand. If I'm gonna make ball on the fly because I run out, then I'm not gonna have chewed ball, I'm just gonna have round ball. So let's talk about that next. So the next thing that I have in this bag at the bottom is I have two implements here. One of them is a lead ladle. And this is so that I can pour shot into this ladle over a fire, melt it down and make round ball. It's much easier to make round ball than it is to make shot. So it's better to carry more shot and make round ball as needed. Unless you're purposely hunting with round ball that day, then I usually th throw eight or 10 of them in my bag just to have them in there and use them up. And then if I need one on the fly, I can always make another. And then I carry a bag mold in there. Also again, 720 bag mold that will make the exact size balls that are in this bag. Pull one out real quick here. Throw it in the mold. There you go. The mold closes up tight around it. And it is exactly the same size as that mold when it comes out. So that allows me, if I need to, to be able to make round ball. And it doesn't take up a lot of room in the bottom of the bag to carry those two implements. And then the only other thing that I have in the bottom of this bag is a folding knife. It's just an old case carbon steel side buster. And pretty much that's it. Then if I want to carry something like a flask to drink water out of or something like that, I do. But generally I just have these items in there all the time and some type of a rag for wiping things down with and taking up a little room. The front has always got my round ball and my wadding in it. So I know where to reach for that stuff. The tools that I need for reloading are always on a tether right here so I can pull them right out of the bag on this tether and use them when I'm on the fly, just like this. And then I can just reach down inside, grab that ramrod and go, okay? I can pretty much reload if I need to on the fly, even right out of this bag in well under, you know, 45 or 50 seconds if I'm in a hurry to get it done. So that gives you a little bit of advice, if you will on the minimum stuff that you need to carry. And really, I mean, you don't need a bag mold. You don't need a lead ladle. If you are if you buy shot and you buy round ball in bulk, you can just carry some of each in your bag. You don't have to worry about it. I carry the other things in there 
for more for traditionalism or more for if it's going to be two or three days that I'm going to be out hunting and I don't want to carry a big giant bunch of round ball with me. And it may be where deer season is going to overlap and I'm going to hunt deer a couple days and I'm going to hunt squirrel and small game a couple days and I want that versatility, then I'll have those things in my bag. It's a really simple process to muzzle at a 12 gauge. You put that 209 shotgun primer in the breech and you close it up. You stand the gun on end and you pour yourself a measure of powder in that brass measure. You pour it down into the gun and you put a wad over the top of that, ram it down there with your ramrod. Drop your ball in, whether that's chewed ball or whether that's just rugged straight round ball. Put another wad over top of that and ram it home. Break the gun open, put a 209 shotgun primer in there, close it up, you're ready to rock. Once you shoot the gun, open the breech, run that small pin through that adapter so that you clean any fouling out of that adapter and you're ready to reload and go again. It's that simple. Again, what I love about the thing is, number one, it comes completely out of the gun very, very easily. You just pop it out with that ramrod when you're done. You can clean it separately from the gun and the barrel is empty and open so that you can clean that barrel whether you're in camp or at home. And it makes a real, real simple job of things. Okay, guys, well, the time I've been sitting here, my Pathfinder provisions are done. So I think I'm gonna have a shot of that. Oh yeah. That's good on a cold day. Guys, listen, I appreciate you joining me out here today for this quick video on some of the equipment that's used to muzzle load a 12 gauge and muzzling a 12 gauge in general. I don't want to shoot the thing off right now because I don't want to spook any deer that may be in the area because I am getting ready to go back out and hunt here in just a few minutes. But I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business, all our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.